So where do you get all your names and stuff for your characters? How do you name um, places, people? Or yeah. how do you choose them? Yeah, so um, Marcy, who's Eric's, the, she's the, the protagonist and Catalyst. I, there's actually yeah. a prequel that I wrote that's going to be re-released at some point, And she's the protagonist of the prequel when she's 12 years old. But Marcy, her name is one of my high school friends, uh, Marcy Rubel, so a really good friend of mine, and I just loved the name. So um, I often take names, if I'm, if I'm fashioning the character somewhat after someone in real life, then- Yeah, yeah, I do that too. Yeah, then I take their name and I morph it a little bit. <laughs> and it's not exactly <laughs> that person, of course. I'm never, no one is ever appearing in my books no. themselves. No. It's it's, and every character has a little bit of me in it, I think. It's just different aspects of me. Um, but I, I um, sometimes like Renee's last name is Auberge and that, that's, you know, like Aubergine, it's purple in French. So I, I'll, sometimes I Google names and sometimes I just, you know, store names up that I hear and think, oh, that'll be a good name for a character. Yeah, I mean, they were so lucky these days. I mean, I had to go out and buy, like, um, name the baby books and stuff yeah. like that to do, yeah. to do mine back in the beginning, where these days you can just go to a place that's got a oh. random random Viking name yeah. generator or right. something. Or French like, names. Oh, and then, yeah, here's, here's a small of the races. names. <laughs> Pick one. Fairies, aliens, whatever you want, you know. They've got, like, yeah. a whole <laughs> Fairy <names>. random <laughs> <laughs> which is so good and I mean I, I even I, I think I even found one for cyborgs like you know I was recently had some transhumans you know I needed some cyborg names um so um have you've traveled a bit in your books they've moved around so where is there somewhere you've really liked being like you didn't want to go you didn't want to leave in my books um yeah you know I so I write young adult novels and yeah. um, when I was writing The Field, my kids were in high school. And so I was listening to, you know, they were, they were talking in front of me. All their friends would hang out at my house. So they would talk about stuff, you know, just random things like what they would do in the cafeteria at school. And I would gather those bits and pieces of information. So not that I want to go back to high school at all, but that was kind of fun, that whole writing about high school and reminiscing about it and all the experiences that I had from high school. Um, right now I am, um, my characters are in France, some of the characters. And I, I was wanting to go to France last year and obviously couldn't because of COVID. Right. That's my big next trip is my boyfriend and I are talking about going to, to France and, and hopefully getting in a little Spain while we're in there. But um, so I went on a trip with my daughter two years ago, might be three years ago, um, and we we were in France and just I've been there several times and really love it there. So <laughs> yes, I want to go to France. Me, I was yeah. like, well, Atlantis. I was like going, well, that that pool, I I I could I could live there. Yeah, I, just I would have lived there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. You're working on the third book now. What's it going to be called? What's it going to be called? Yeah, do you know? Have you got a title oh, yet? Yeah. I don't know if I should say. Uh, I have two titles that I'm kind of working with. Um, I'm not going to say because I'm not sure yet. Okay. <laughs> it's basically <laughs> That's I'm right. writing I it. To... Go ahead. Sorry. No, but it's set, so it's set in France. Well, so so the field is is Eric's perspective. Catalyst is Marcy's perspective. I tried to write Catalyst from both of their perspective, but I totally couldn't do it. I completely yeah. messed it. My brothers both read the book and they're like, "This sucks," you know. So you have to redo the whole thing. So <laughs> just from Marcy's perspective, thanks, but, you know, thanks. Well, I was glad. You know, you need that kind of feedback. You need that yeah, kind of feedback. So so the next book, book three is from both of their perspectives. So Marcy is in Washington, D.C. and Eric is in France. So this and now it works. along at the same pace and they're sort of interacting as they go. That's because I had a, I actually had a friend of mine going, oh, I, I've been writing a book and then I, I swapped to another first person ex perspective for the next chapter and she's going, I don't think you can do that. I said, I just did that 12 times in my last book. 
<laughs> oh, right. If it okay. works, if it works, you can do whatever you want, right? You've just got to be able to do that. You've just got to be able to, like, you know, jump from one person's head to the other and remember whose head you're in. <laughs> so, yeah, jumping around. So, um, do you have a huge um, online presence too? Where do you hang out? Yeah, like so I'm on. Yeah, I'm on Instagram, Tracy Richardson, author. Um, I'm on Twitter, but I'm not very active. I haven't got the hang of Twitter yet. So <laughs> I don't like it as well as Instagram. Um, it's kind of yeah. I find it. It's a bit kind of like it, it's not a very um, it's not a very spiritual place. It's a place to you know go find out like oh what was that flash in the sky earlier? You know, like a billion yeah. people will have tweeted about it and you go all oh, right that's what it was but um yeah. as far as like um I found that on Instagram people are um really sweet and um yes. on um like YouTube I because I do a lot of YouTubing I'm probably put this interview on YouTube yes, if, yes. You know, my channel too my channel too yeah yeah, exactly. And so, you know, I've, I've found that um, they're really good. Facebook, have you found Facebook's been a bit quiet lately? Has anybody else found that? I'm just wondering. Yeah, I'm people are moving away there. from it, especially my audience, younger people. They're not on Facebook as much. No, they're kind of TikTokers or what's that other one? Um, it sounds really horrible, like disharmony or something. <laughs> no, that's not what it's called, yeah. but yeah. But then I have a blog, I do a blog, and I also have a newsletter, which, so there's, you know, lots of ways to, www.tracyrichardsonauthor.com is the website. Yeah, I just do, um, uh, tracyharding.com is my website, and I've got allthingstracy.com.au as a store, because I, I actually have um, started doing my own books, because a lot of them have gone print on demand, yeah. out here because publishers just aren't kind of, you know, I mean, some of them are sitting in the storehouse, but um, it's just great to have a store because uh, people can just find them readily w without having to wait to, for the print. And then you get them signed too. Yeah. So actually speaking about that, tell us about your journey to being published. Like um, you didn't go through, do you have an agent or you didn't go no. through it? Because no. that's kind of, no, it's kind of like an older wrong. thing now. It, it yes, is, I, yeah, it is. I mean, I, there's just so many ways to be published. So I, exactly. I did have a publishing company, yeah, and published my books, two of my books through the publishing company. Um, and then when we decided... And that was interesting, actually, stop there, because the, with the publishing company too, I found it really interesting because it was somewhere between um, like regular publishing and, and self-publishing. It was kind of sitting in the middle there rather than actually being entirely self-published. So well, tell us a little yeah. bit about that. So, so with Luminous Books, it was traditional publishing. So we published other yeah. books in a traditional way. With Brown Books, yeah. who's my publisher now, it's a hybrid publisher. Yeah, love, love Brown yeah. Books. Love, 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 love Tom Reality and... Because you were sing, you were singing their praises to me too. So I'm yeah. Going, oh, yeah. America. So it's a hybrid, which means that um, I pay the upfront costs of yeah. getting my book created, but I retain the rights to my books, and I get a much higher royalty percentage. So um, it's it's a kind of I mean Brown Books is like what brilliant most growing independent publisher in the industry. So it's kind of a new way of looking at it. Um, some people will say, oh, that's self-publishing, that's vanity, but it's not, not at all. No, because, I mean, there's a whole lot of things that go with that, like pr what well, promotion is really the main reason that you go through a publisher and don't self-publish because right. they've got that and the sales team that's going out there and selling it into libraries into stores into that you know that kind of thing as well as you know setting up this kind of affair like publicity and stuff like that and that's all very different I think if you if you self-publish and then uh, but maintaining rights is really great because you've got things happening now like blockchain publishing um, which 
you know, probably a lot of your traditional publishers haven't haven't gone there. I think there's only two publishers in the world that actually publish on the blockchain, but that's going to become a thing as well, like ebooks or what have you. You know, so it, there's a lot of really great reasons for maintaining your copyright and being able to publish traditionally. I think that's absolutely that's probably one of the best deals I've heard, and I've interviewed quite a few. <laughs> Authors and ask them that particular question. So I think that, um, that's a really um, that's a good point for anybody looking to self-publish. The thing these days is really not about getting on with the publishing. I know a lot of publishers that have, I mean, a lot of authors that have actually rejected um, like big publishing deals because it really just doesn't suit them anymore. Um, from right. you know, just unless living. you're Michelle Obama, yeah, I mean, unless you're Michelle Obama or someone like that, they're not going to put a big Camp marketing campaign behind you it still falls on you to do the legwork, get the word out, all that. Do these kinds of events. You know. The genre. What do they classify yeah. you as as a genre over there? What do you classify that? Young adult wondering? science fiction. Yeah, young adult science young fiction. Science fiction. Yeah. Okay, because I've it's been. Difficult. I've like. I've, yeah, it is, isn't it? I was talking to you about this the other day and saying there should actually, esoteric, that's the word I was looking for before, esoteric fiction, because a lot of people think esoteric means a cult, but it doesn't. It actually means just unknown, like time travel, for example, would be an esoteric concept because it is an unknown concept. Well, at this time we think, although there's probably a lot the government aren't telling us, <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, um, so I was allowed. like. And, I've, yeah, I've been put all over the place because I've got autobiographical stuff in my books and, I, you know, and the metaphysical side of things too. They kind of just don't know where to put you, but apparently yeah. we're fantasy. Okay. <laughs> I like being fantasy genre you know, for so many reasons because there's no can limit. I say something? Can I say something um, that just occurred to me about something we talked about earlier? So you were talking about people being – brought into the concepts of what we talk about through our books. But I know you probably have this experience and I've had it too. Every time I meet with um, readers and I'll, they'll talk about intuition or connecting with the collective consciousness, everyone has an experience like that. Oh. Whether it's something small, like you knew that your friend was going to call you on the phone and they did or something big, like you knew something big was going to happen around 9-11, but you had no idea what it was. I had a radio interview where the guy said, I have it recorded on the radio that I was having some kind of a premonition about something that was going on. I didn't know what it was. And, and he talks about like a plane and whatever. And then, I don't know, a couple of days later, the 9-11 the crash happened. So everybody has some kind of an experience, but it's like a muscle that you can exercise and make stronger if you just practice kind of tapping in a little bit more. Exactly. But then there's the other side of that too. And it's like, did I create that? Because this, everything is relative to the observer, like actually predicting something. Can it become a self predict, uh, a self, um, you know, propagating yeah. prophecy. Yeah. Fulfilling yeah. self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. That's the word. Um, because, you know, that's also um, another way of looking at it. Like, you know, when somebody's very sure the plane's going to crash, you know, like one of the, it's not ironic, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's premonition. It's or premonition. it could be creating your own reality. Exactly. Right. right. So, um, you know. Questions? Sure. What you got? Okay, so Amy has asked, um, environmental issues are a major theme in your work, Tracy. How would you describe the current state of our nation's relationship with these issues? Um, I think, oh, go ahead. <laughs> Both of you. You can't say just Tracy, can you, you have <laughs> just wait, oh. hold on. <laughs> go Tracy. All right, well, um, I, in, in the US, um, you know, there are really two, school, two schools of thought, whether climate change is real or not. And again, coming from a science standpoint, which is always my baseline, um, it is real. And so it's extremely important that we do something about it because our actions are affecting the planet. Um, my, my brother, we, I grew up in Chicago. My brother now lives in the San Francisco area. And he sent me um, a little note 
a, a, a text that, uh, to an article that said that winter is leaving the Great Lakes. So they, we have these big Great Lakes in the Midwest, huge, like oceans of fresh water. And the, they get cold. And I don't know the details. I didn't have time to read the whole article. But the, they have this thing where the cold and the, the warm water switches and it, it brings up nutrients and all. Well, that's not happening to the extent that it no. used to. That's, that's that's, you know, in the Midwest, we don't see a lot of climate change, except for maybe tornadoes. We don't see the hurricanes. We don't see the rising seawater. But the Great Lakes, yeah. So that's very concerning. And, and I try to raise the alarm in my books. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, personally, um, I think all this talk about climate change and stuff, it doesn't matter whether there's climate change or not. We just have to do better. We just have to do better not polluting do everything you can, you know, whether we're causing it or just exacerbating the problem, whether this is a natural thing that the planet goes through or whatever, all we can do is do our best with it and, and care for those little creatures, you know. They're all depending on us and that's what I really worry about more than humanity. I mean, bugger humanity, we've really stuffed things up. But animals and nature and this planet are more important in my opinion yeah. um you know so we just need to do basically do better it doesn't matter don't you can argue to you blue in the face whether it's happening or not but pollution is certainly happening and please tell me that you think this idea about putting reflective bloody metals up in our atmosphere to block out the sun like cause a nice nuclear winner thank you mr bill gates um <laughs> is a bad idea because seriously I what goes just, up what, yeah why don't we just stop polluting? I mean, this yeah. is a beautiful it's place great. that we live on, a beautiful place. When we go hiking in the woods, there's always trash. It's like, why can't you just pick up your trash, people? Yeah, it's hard to understand. <laughs> I mean, I, here I know um, in Australia we've got a lot better with that. We're a lot more aware of it. And, I mean, I think because we have so many natural bloody disasters too, we're very aware about the animals, like the the critters that we share the bush with yeah. um we had a real dilemma up where i used to live because somebody had let feral cats go and then it's kind of like okay trying to save the kittens <laughs> not let them go feral you know you've got to put down the cats because you can't release them back out in nature even if they have been neutered they're going to be killing the natural wildlife you know so there's all these dilemmas because somebody left their cat behind because it was pregnant you know, and all of a sudden all the little furry animals are suffering. We're losing all our little finches and stuff like that because the cats aren't getting fed, you know. <laughs> so yeah. It's like we just need to do better and just be responsible for our own stuff and that's where creating your own reality is so important and that people understand that they create what happens in their life. And so if you are a good person and you think with Deutsch, that's what you attract and they may think that's very fairy, but actually... It works for me. I've got to tell you, I don't have any people in my life that I consider to be a negative influence. And it's not because I block people out of my life. It's just because you attract like attracts like. That's what you choose, you know? yeah. Yeah, so if you want a better life, really just be a better person and you'll get a better life. <laughs> it's really <laughs> that easy, you know. <laughs> Take responsibility for what you do and you feel so much better not blaming people, you know. And that kind of got off the subject from the environment, but it's all kind of, you know, tied up together, I feel. Be decent human beings and take care of your home. It's so funny that you guys uh, mentioned pollution, especially with the, the new mask everywhere and the mass pollution that's happening. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so glad. And, yeah. I mean, I go to the supermarket, I can still smell things through that mask. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if I can smell things through that mask, you know, and I'm pretty sure that if you smoked a cigarette and you blew it, it would just, you'd see it. Yeah. Well, the people are leaving the masks on the side of the road, in the forest, park, in the car. The whole, I mean, it used to be straws, now it's masks. Like people are, yeah. people suck sometimes. It's just like, <laughs> pick up your mask. I don't know. I know, it's so frustrating. It's like really we're just jumping from the frying pan into the fire here, but okay. <laughs> like, right, be do you have some other questions for us? I do. So what are some small ways that you believe anyone could start doing today other than stop polluting? 
that can help. <laughs> Um, well, I would say the biggest impact on global warming is carbon emissions. And the biggest culprits are corporations. So it's difficult for us as individuals to do something. So in my opinion, it's speaking out and speaking truth to power and contacting your legislatures to try and make change. But on, on an individual basis, um, you know, plastic is like, the, in plastic in the oceans, there's like a, a an island of plastic in the Pacific Ocean, the side of size of Rhode Island. It's hard to really understand how big that is, but it's it's horrible. Yep, it's huge. And I mean, it's really great to see all these um, these companies bringing out these plates that are biodegradable, that are made out of something you can eat. And if you don't want to eat it, the birds will eat it, or the fish will eat it, or yeah, or, like out of banana leaves or brilliant. avocado avocado uh, pits. That's my sort of thing. Yeah, I've seen that too. You know, necessity is the you know a genius of invention or something. You know, it's yeah. like exactly right. Like you just. I think people are already kind of all over that and that big pit in the middle of the ocean, you know, some young kid created this fantastic vessel to go out there and scoop it all up and sort yeah, it out, you know. I've seen that. And it, that just really, you know, it excites me. It's an exciting time to be alive because I think people are, are figuring out that um, that we can do this. We, we, you know, we don't have to be the disposable society. Actually, it's better if we're not. It's better if you reuse things you know I have all sorts of clips and amazing new little gadgets so that I don't need to use all that rubbish anymore right but again with your mindset take responsibility yeah all right Tracy Richardson I have a question from Alex how do you balance writing compelling characters with informing people about spirituality and the environment ah uh, that's a really good question um because especially when you're talking about science topics, it can get bogged down pretty quickly. So I guess my, my characters are learning about these issues. Um, they don't purport to be experts at all. Um, they're fallible, they make mistakes, they um, explore and they have doubts about themselves um, as they learn. And then there's always a character who has the information to share or has insights to share um, so I try and do it in little bits and pieces and, and weave it in as part of an exciting concept of discovery for the characters. Yeah, that's the way I do it too. You just explained that beautifully. I don't really you. <laughs> That's exactly what I do. I'll find a premise and I'll find a way to work it into the conversation or, and I, I, I noticed that that's what you were doing, like just beautifully leading people through it, which is exactly the way I do. So you don't actually feel like you're just, getting off topic it's all part or of the dump, flow and that's like a dump yeah just keep it yeah no I hate those and they're so obvious when you do that so yeah best not to go there if you're a writer but yeah you just work it into the conversation or into something that happens you know like into a situation and um yeah that's the way I do it too awesome um, Emily asked, how can you express the destruction of fracking to help other people understand why it's important? Just go watch the earthquake guy. Yeah. <laughs> Five minutes. <laughs> and he'll show you that all those earthquakes, they're just happening right along those fracking lines, all of them. Like there's all connects, you know, he'll show yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, when they pump all those, yeah, when they pump all that water and chemicals into the ground, it causes earthquakes, like Tracy said, in places don't have earthquakes like in in Kansas and it also pollutes the groundwater with all these totally unregulated chemicals they don't even say what it is and, and like you were saying about the guy that went on the river and lit the river on fire people can light their faucets on fire and yeah then it's naturally occurring methane yeah. so but but when you release the methane into the well water it's poison so yeah exactly my computer's just telling me I'm going to run out of power in a second, so I'll be back in one second. So just answer a question. I'll be right back. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, Jenny did say what we were talking about with pollution and everything. It's definitely, we're talking about hope here, the, the hope of humanity taking on all of our world problems and making it better, right? Yes, that's the that's the idea is that we're capable of doing this. And that's why the title of, of the book is Catalyst, 
The characters are catalysts for change, and we all can be catalysts for change. And it may seem daunting, but like what, what we were saying about the power of our thoughts, you know, things happen and we can manifest things ourselves. Um, and there is hope, absolutely hope. Right. I, um, I have a story about manifesting crazy things. I, um, when I moved up here to Queensland, I was sitting outside and I decided that it was about time I sort of got onto the making films. And I asked the universe to send me the director of this particular show. I didn't even know what his name was. I just saw the show, thought, okay, that's, I need someone with that kind of vision. Send me that guy. Two days later, I get a call from someone and she wants to buy the rights and book. And while we're negotiating, she keeps talking about this producer she wants to use, this producer, this producer. And I go and looked him up. <laughs> He's the guy that produced the show. Like that's wow. a one in a zillion chance, right. okay? And, and it manifests within a week. Yeah. So that's how, and I wasn't even trying. That wasn't even trying hard. <laughs> yeah. and, sometimes um, you don't, sometimes it's better when you don't try hard. You don't. Because if you, you you sit there going, I want this to happen, I want this to happen, it's like you believe it won't happen. That's why you've got to keep reinforcing it. It's those little off-the-cuff thoughts like, oh, gee, it would be great if that happened. Usually they're the ones that just go, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, Jenny, just, Jenny just said maybe it was a premonition rather than a manifestation too. Maybe you were tapping and see, that's the thing. You've got that constant circle of creation and that's the partnership because even more than creating your reality, you co-create it with the universe. And yeah. uh, one of the questions on my sheet is what's the meaning of life? <laughs> and to me, the meaning of life is creation, experience, like being here to co-create and experience what's here. Right. What do you think the meaning of life is? I think it's um, personal growth, you know, and and, and having fun. You know, try not to be so serious about everything and try and enjoy it and, and appreciate, you know, gratitude is a big buzzword, but it's hugely important. If you can appreciate the little things, then the big things kind of fall into place, you know. Exactly. Gratitude is a huge one. And, I mean, just I try every morning when I wake up, first thought, Today is going to be a fantastic day. Start the day every day with that thought. Train your brain because it's amazing. Actually, on my YouTube channel, I've got a few videos, really short, only a couple of minutes long, that are just filled with those kind of affirmations that just get your head in the right place. And that's also part of, like, what you create because you know, frequencies like mine and frequencies, they just attract each other, you know. Frequency yeah. resonates, you know. Yeah. That science as well. Right. So, so electrons you know, and protons and neutrons are all like attracts like. Yep. I know. It's so exciting, isn't it? I was so excited when <laughs> science just came along and just went, yeah, you were right all along. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Crazy <laughs> the Richardson, what topic would you like to explore in your writing that you have yet to take on? Um, well, this is a little different. Um, uh, I'd like to tackle mental illness. Like some of my characters are really struggling with, with those kinds of things um, because that's been something that's happened to me personally and to people that I know. And um, I think that it's a powerful message to talk about you know, success and, and getting better and finding help and that it's not, you're not alone. That the millions and millions and millions of people struggle with all kinds of anxiety and depression whatever so but in a fiction format so i'm not sure how that will look exactly <laughs> <laughs> well you know when you environmentalism it. it could be yeah we could tie it for sure like being depressed about the state of the world <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's not a stretch <laughs> it's not. yeah what about you tracy anything you want to write about later on um I, yeah, God, so many things. Um, there's, for starters, um, you know, my fans have, have looked at this present past, which was the last book, and gone, there's more to that one, right? Yeah, there's another two books to that one, actually. Um, oh, wow. There's a trilogy. <laughs> so maybe go back there, but um, there's also, I was really interested in um, 
the whole story of the uh, Montauk boys in the US, like them being sent into the future and what they saw there. And um, I'd really, really um, like to uh, do a story about that, which I was going to call Stellium because that was how they um, uh, peg time. When you get a stellium of planets in the same house, um, they all resonate at a frequency, like all the planets sing. And um, when you get them in a stellium, um, they would create a certain sonic and that's the way they'd peg certain uh, periods of time in the story anyway. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to sort of, yeah, more time travel. I like time travel. Cool, yeah. Cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? So I think actually, yep, it's about time to wrap it up. <laughs> We just wanted to say thank you guys so much for talking all the things because this was really enlightening for future writers and definitely for readers like me. So do you guys have any last words to say to everyone? Uh, thank you so much for coming. Big um, hi here from uh, Australia. We're having a beautiful day here today. Um, do check out my books if um, if you're interested to know more. There's a lot of them, but just go to my site. You can I'll sort you out. Yeah, yeah. And all and thank of you. I'm, I'm, thank you, Tracy. I appreciate your interviewing me very much. Thank you. You're very welcome. It was fun, and it like I said. Um, also, if um, I've got um, my readers are probably watching this after the fact, but. Um, you know, if you want another writer, Tracy, it's like seriously, there's paragraphs in there that you, you would think I had written. So <laughs> it's like oh, wow. it's very cool. Thank you. And, and it's great that. to actually read something that um, that spikes my interest, you know, that's just outside yeah. of the realm of normal romance yeah. or, you know, who did it. And they're fun. Whatever. They're fun books, but they make you think. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I love, I think. Uh, more, we need more of that on TV as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, thank you guys again. And remember, thank you so much for having us. Go it. to their website if you want to purchase their books or the bookstore where you guys are this event. And their website's in the chat um, Tracy Richardson author .com and tracyharding.com. Thank right. you. Bye, guys. Thank Goodbye. you for having Bye. us. Have a great time. Bye.